and change it. With this particular moment at West Ham Marine, I think it's just too negative. I think they're better than they're, they're better <coughs> than what I think David, how David set the team up. I think they're better than that, West Ham this year. They've got a lovely balance about their game. They defend really well. You know, they, they know what they're doing when they go into a back five. They've had some really good performances when you think across that back five. Gresswell and, and, and Dawson and, you know, right across there. And, and I think, you know, they've got some players of creation. They just sometimes just need to trust them and say, let's go and attack a team because we are good. I've seen them play uh, uh, different to, to Man United. They went to Villa and they absolutely were perfect. They defended, but they attacked them. Every time they got the ball, they got bodies forward. They looked a very, very good side. And I think they're in that position thinking, oh, what are we doing here? Oh, you know, are we that good? Yes, they are. You know, United, I think, deserve to win the game overall. But I just think their intent's got to be a little bit more positive in some games. They haven't got the belief that they, uh, they should have. Interesting. We shall get into that in a moment. But that has rounded off Sunday's Premier League action that began with a huge win uh, for Brighton at the bottom. 2-1 at Southampton, a thumping one for Leicester of the bottom club. Sheffield United 5-0. Kelechi Iheanacho getting a hat-trick in that game. Uh, North London is red today. Arsenal, 2-1 winners against Tottenham Hotspur and United win it by a goal to nil at Old Trafford. One more very important game still to round the match week off. The Premier League champions, Liverpool, after all their issues at home, are on the road at Molyneux to face Wolves. So confirmation, Manchester United go back into second. 14 points behind the leader City with a game in hand. A point ahead of Leicester, having played the same number of games. But you can see that gap now uh, between fifth and second, as far as they're concerned, significantly nine points. West Ham stay there uh, on 48 points. West Ham uh, are still free clear of Spurs, beaten in the North London derby. Liverpool can go above Jose Mourinho's side if they win at Molyneux tomorrow. Arsenal, four points behind Spurs now. As you expected, uh, always going to make, uh, make it really hard for you. And of course, uh, we had a few chances. Second half, it could have been more... Uh, comfortable towards the end we had a few decent chances to be fair uh, to finish the game off and but we don't like it to make uh, make it easy for ourselves we make it hard for ourselves it's about not giving them turnovers all the time first 15 minutes we kept giving the ball away every time we attacked and that's uh, you don't build pressure you don't build momentum they counter attack and it's like end to end game so it's about calming the heads down get more composure play and then eventually you'll get chances and hopefully you can take them we didn't, but uh, it was a good uh, set play and we scored. Had a few injuries, but uh, the ones who've played, they've performed. Big week, uh, Europa League and FA Cup. So we're looking forward to getting a few players back, hopefully for Thursday, and then um, hopefully put a good performance out. Feeding 23 games now uh, for Manchester United. The table, says Michael, they're the second best team in the Premier League at the moment. They are the closest to Manchester City just. Are they, do you think, consistently? <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. It's taken me six hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the table obviously says it, so you've got to lean with that. Uh, I still watch them and try to fathom out what is what is a Manchester United style. What is what what does Ole Gunnar Solskjaer tell them before the game? Do they, you know, because to me the team actually sits there and it looks like they've got counter attacking off to a tee. I think they're a fantastic counter attacking team. Still have questions about them when they're playing against, you know, teams that, that like to sit and defend. And don't get me wrong, that's not easy to do. It's not easy to break, you know, 11 men down. Um, but I still don't see a, you know... When I close my eyes and think of Manchester United, I know what they used to look like 20 years ago. You just knew what Manchester United were. Now, I, I, I'm, I still think they're a work in, pro, in progress. So, I think second best in the league. Possibly, probably, but I don't think anybody's... You know, Man City are far and away. Liverpool are the second best, really. Liverpool well, are the second season, best. Though, are they? Well, not in recent weeks, but they are. I'd say they are the second best team. Well, when, when they're eighth? Yeah, but I still think they are. They're Europe, you know, the recent European champions. Yeah, not the way they're World playing champions. now, Mick. Not the way they're playing now. You, you can't... Not. You stop, got to do it stop laughing when you're talking. <laughs> no, I'm not laughing. It's not, you're trying to wind me up. <laughs> no, listen, they're reigning the rain in a Premier League champion, so they're still, you know, a very good team. They're just in a bad patch. Chelsea are looking good as well. I don't know. You, you, you could argue, like obviously we're doing now, if they're the second best. Debating, I think. Yes, yeah. debating. Where, where are you on the current Manchester United team? Then? A little bit similar to Michael. I, 
I think they're a side that the counter, they've got players, individual flair. When they've got a bit of space, when they've got space, people like Rashford and Greenwood, when they've got some space, they'll use it and they'll punish you. When they've got to open a team up, that's where I think it's only Fernandez that's got a pass in him in many ways. And they're finding it hard. They, they relied in the end on, a, on an own goal, a set play. They created a couple of good chances. They're not clinical enough um, when it's tight, when they're under pressure. So if a team's going to defend deep, and like West Ham did, particularly first half, you know, those chances, you're always going to be under pressure. You're not, when you're counter-attacking, you're going to get space. That you're sucking the team onto you to hit, and they've got pace in the team. So when you think about Martial, Rashford, Greenwood, for instance, James, they're all decent, more than decent, when they've got space and it's the game, the, the pitch is open, what I call open, you're 1v1. Now, that doesn't always happen against teams. Teams are going to bank... Rarely. Yeah, against Man United. Against the top teams. Maybe you might do that to City, what they did, and they, what they did to City is a prime example. <laughs> In Europe, they might be able to do it, but when they've got to unlock a, a defence, they're still not quite there. I'm with Michael. I'm not, like, thinking... I see Chelsea as a team of, with their shape and they know what they're doing and there's an identity more than perhaps Man United at this moment in time. I think that's the word, identity. Mm. That's, the, that's the word I, I was missing before. I like Manchester United. I think they're very, very good, and I think they can go to anywhere. We've seen them go to the Etihad in recent years and win. They can beat anyone on the day, and they've got unbelievable players. You know, Pogba's probably another one that can unlock a, unlock a pass. But that identity, I'm still waiting for it to develop into something that I think, bump, that's Manchester United. That's what I'm looking at now. I think when you look at... Um... Like the chances, we know that they, they are counter-attacking side. That's what they do. We see they can't, they don't break teams down very well. And even like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said there, first 15 minutes, even when they get into a position where they should be confident and, and going at teams at home, they, they give the ball away. The last pass is sloppy and stuff like that. And then you get chances like what um, Rashford had, which you take those chances, the team have to play differently. I might maybe have to come out. You might maybe get a little bit more space. But, <clears throat> but excuse me, when that doesn't happen, they just stay, stay in like West Ham did. And then it's very difficult for them to break down. But when you look at the way that they, they are playing and what they've done under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, they, he's the best. He's the be, since Alex Ferguson, he's the best manager. What they've done, they haven't won anything. But, you know what I mean, they have got to a stage with all the managers that they've had up to this point where he has performed the best out of them. He needs to win something. There's a lot of changes happening at the minute, Gaffer, but for me, they still need more than just Bruno Fernandes to unlock and create something. See there, that, that little, that move <coughs> we just put together there, Fred had 30 yards of space to turn on it. He threaded a, a good ball through to Fernandes, who's got space. Then they, that's where they're dangerous. That's when they've got time and space. For me, at times, they're, they're, I, I, I wonder whether they need McTominay and Fred playing square and in that deep position. There's got to be games where you could say, I need more creation. Somebody, you know, if Fernandez isn't on his game, who else is going to open this team up? And I think this time, you know, is it Van der Beek? He hasn't shown it yet, but he hasn't really been given a chance. No. If Pogba's out of the team because he's injured, if he's not going to get a chance then, when is he going to get a chance? But it always seems that they want to play these two holding players, that's it, and then we'll go from there. And there's certain times I think, you need a bit more than that because you can't keep relying on an own goal or a set play. The fact is, the facts are, they've, what is it, one in 21? You said one in 21? They've lost. 23. Since, since they've lost. I mean, you can't knock that, can you? And they're second in the league, but there's still something missing there, big time. I think really look at, as well, with, with Van der Beek, Donny Van der Beek, we're talking about somebody that from the age of, what, eight, nine, and when he's at Ajax, he, he's built on a possession-based kind of game. So even that sign, you have to say, he is a very, very good player. But how can you play in this Man United side the way he's been brought up to play when they're not a possession-based side, they're a counter-attacking side? So then you look at him and you think, well, how's he going to come in and all of a sudden make a difference? Now, I've watched him a, a few games and he's pl tried to get into that 10 place where, space where he's in the space to try and make... But it's, it's not happening for him because they're not keeping the ball long enough for him to move and do his thing. So... It's going to be something that is going to be interesting to watch with Man United because going forward, it, they cannot continue playing like they're playing and hoping that Bruno Fernandes is going to do something. Because at the moment, if you look at him as well, he's looking a little bit tired. Mm. He's looking a little bit leggy. So 
you know, they're asking a lot of him. Mm -hmm. So something else has got to happen. Pogba hopefully coming back. But, like, they need something more than the way they're playing because, like I say, I don't know what their identity yeah. is either. Glenn says something missing. If, if, hypothetically, he could go out and buy one big player, like, like City did with Diaz, the big change from last season, they got, when they got Ruben Diaz, where, not, not who, but where would that be? What, what type of player would make that difference to Manchester United to, to get them closer to the top? Well, a top centre forward, I think. I'd mm. like to see pace alongside Maguire. Because I think that changes the whole dynamic. If they can start defending, you know, man v man, 2v2, 1v1, things like that, I think they just change the whole dynamic of a team. I don't think they can really do that. They tried to do it against Tottenham early on in the season and basically have been scared stiff of committing since. bodies forward since. So they've been a bit more pragmatic. They never tend to, to beat teams fours and five nils. If I had one position, though, uh, it would be a, a centre forward, right down the middle. You know what? <sighs> there's There's... One that's on everybody's lips at the moment that everybody, that a lot of teams actually <laughs> every need. Club, isn't it? Every club. Well, Haaland is mm -hmm. obviously the name in question, and virtually every big team at the moment needs a centre forward. There's so many teams out there that need yeah. one. He is going to be hot property um, when he becomes available, if he becomes available. If you were the manager of that United team yeah. now, would that be the top of your priority? Yeah, it would then? be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it's got to be. You need a, a young Cavani. You got Cavani at the wrong time, you know, five, six years ago. His movement, his old up play, like you're saying there, he, and everything he had, you know, he's got still. Um, and when he plays for United, I see a different United team, even now, at his age. And he's not that old, what is he, 33? He's younger than Jamie Vardy. Yeah, exactly. And um, so I would definitely, Harlan would be the one. But as you say, how are you going to get him? You know, it, the day, have the days gone when Man United are in for you as a player? Oh, I'm going to Man United. It was Real Madrid or Man United. You know, he's played with both of them, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, stoked. You know, it, 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 those days, unfortunately, for United, I think, have gone. They've got to build that up again. But um, Haaland would be on everyone's lips, wouldn't they? Every club would want him. You're probably hard. I'd still, I'd still try and get Sancho as well to go with him. If you can, I, I, I envisage it. If you could have a Man United side that's, that like, had Pogba, Fernandes, Haaland and Sancho, <laughs> you know what I mean? then you're starting to feel that somewhere along the line you've got to get creativity involved there. You know, because, like, my problem with Man United is when I watch them is, is that they don't keep the ball well enough in that last third where the creativity is needed to open a West Ham up, move defenders around, a link man, like the forward who can hold it, keep it there in the, on the edge of the box, play it in and around someone like Fernandez who can slip it into little spaces, and then all of a sudden you, you can counter-attack or you can play through them. You know, that's what they need, any of those two. You know what I mean? I don't think Sancho's something that they should just give up on because he's creative as well. He goes past people. The problem they've also got psychologically is the noisy neighbours next to them are that team. They open you up. Even if you bank up against them, they've got the ability from left, right and centre. So many different players, City, to open teams up. And they're their big rivals as well. <laughs> you know, so you're always, they're always at the moment going to be just under that bar because they're, that, that bar is so high. City are setting that sort of style of play that United used to have back in years ago, City have taken over that mental. Yeah. Take City out of it and we're drooling over Manchester United. The great run that they're on, they'd be top of the league, we'd all be saying, wow, they're back, very hard to beat, you know, got pace up front. We'll be talking in a different way. The problem is, as Glenn said, we're, we're comparing everyone against one of the best teams we've ever seen. So, you know, inevitably we're going to be nitpicking, saying they could get better here and they could get more creativity because we're seeing it week in, week out from their neighbours. OK. And you say today that they had to rely on an own goal. It came from a set play. They take it the way the game was going, though. Well, I mean, it's a quality ball in. Don't get me wrong. It is a quality ball in, but, you know, West Ham, surprisingly, conceding it, be it an own goal, because they don't... That's one good thing they are very good at, you know, defending corners. They don't concede at all. I think it's, this might even be the first one this season that they've conceded. There's the head of he shut his eyes, I think. He's got himself in an awkward position. You know, he, he's not actually goal side of the ball. The ball actually is coming so quickly yeah. that the ball's goal side of him. And it's just hit him and it's only going one way towards his own goal. He couldn't really get in a position. Didn't have the time because of the pace of the ball that come in. But in the end, that's the difference. That's where, how United have got across the line at the end. And they've done it time and time again this year. They haven't played particularly with a great style, but they've won the game. And that's not a bad sign. No. And I must ask you, at the other end of the pitch, Dean Henderson, 
Um, David De Gea's final day, we understand, of isolation today. Um, 16 starts in a Manchester United goal. That's 10 clean sheets now, and six in the last seven. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have loads to do today, but of but, course, did everything right. Can't, you know, you can't complain. That's a fascinating um, area of the pitch. Manchester United, number one, has been one of the most famous, spoken about positions in, in certainly British football for the last 20 years. It's a massive position, goalkeeper at Manchester United. Uh, and there hasn't been many questions for, for quite a few years, but now David De Gea has made a few mistakes. Henderson's looking very good, had his experience out on loan, and now he's come back and, you know, not really put, been putting a foot wrong, although he did in the last uh, right. last few yeah. minutes in, in, uh, in midweek. So that is a fascinating position. If he shows himself to be good enough um, to take over the gloves full-time, as in now, then I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will stick by him and, uh, and leave David De Gea out. If he doesn't, if he thinks he might need another year, then I think De Gea will be back in. I, I, I think that's a really good point, but also his performance today, that mistake has not played on his mind. And that's good for a young keeper, a big club like United, when it's all on you, you know, to go out there and, and, and show the character. You wouldn't have thought that. You wouldn't have thought that he'd played a, a big mistake in a big game for United, two-legged affair. They've now got to go away from it. He's gone out there and put that behind him and he said, right, let's get, let's, this is my, I've still got this opportunity to get that jersey. And he performed like that today. Interesting. Okay, when we come back, 